The Crown Jewels are a priceless collection of over 100 objects, featuring over 23,000 gemstones. Technically, they are the property of the nation and held in trust by the monarch. The collection contains some of the most famous symbols of the British monarchy, as well as some controversial gems, and are said to be of incalculable cultural, historical, and symbolic value. Join us as we count down the five most famous crown jewels of England. Number 5. The Coronation Spoon Most of the original monarchal regalia were destroyed by Parliament in 1649 after they executed King Charles I and made Britain a republic. A few items survived, including a small silver gilt spoon, now known as the Coronation Spoon. The spoon was sold rather than destroyed, and the buyer returned the item to Charles II when the monarchy was reinstated, probably to gain royal favor. The coronation spoon was first recorded as part of the royal collection in 1349 and was incorporated into the crowning ceremony at the coronation of King James I in 1603. It is believed to be the only piece of royal guildsmith's work that dates from the 12th century and is thought to have first belonged to Henry II or Richard I. While the spoon's intended use is somewhat of a mystery, it was clearly made to be symbolic rather than practical. It was perhaps first used to mix water and wine in a chalice. However, since the coronation of James I, the spoon has been used to anoint the new monarch with holy oil. The delicate and detailed spoon was sold in 1649 for the price of 16 shillings, around 9 pence in today's money, or 11 cents in US dollars. Suffice it to say, it's worth considerably more now. Number 4. The Koinor The Koinor diamond is probably the most controversial gemstone in the crown jewel collection. The diamond originated in India, which was the only source for diamonds before 1725, and the legend is that it was found by locals amongst river sand. It is first mentioned in recorded history in 1628 when the Mughal ruler of India, Shah Jahan, commissioned a throne bedecked in gemstones. The throne took seven years to make, and at the top, forming the head of a gemstone peacock, was the Koh Noor diamond. The wealth of the Mughal Empire eventually attracted the attention of invaders. In 1739, the Persian ruler Nader Shah invaded Delhi, carting off its treasures on the backs of 12,000 horses, 4,000 camels, and 700 elephants. The peacock throne was amongst the loot, but the Koh Noor diamond was removed for Nader to wear on an armband. For 70 years, the diamond was kept in what is now known as Afghanistan. The area was unstable, as many factions vied for power, and soon another nation took advantage of the growing power vacuum in India. You guessed it, the British. The British East India Company quickly expanded its control, annexing territory as it grew. But the British were after more than just natural resources. They knew about the Koh Noor diamond, and they wanted it. In 1813, the Sikh ruler of Northwest India, Ranjit Singh, had managed to win the diamond back from the Afghan Durrani dynasty. For Ranjit, the diamond was worth more than its monetary value. It symbolized prestige and power. The diamond's symbolism captivated the British. What better way to demonstrate their colonial superiority than by owning the jewel that represented dominion over Indian lands? When Ranjit Singh died in 1839, he left the diamond, among other treasures, to a sect of Hindu priests. The British were appalled, and authorities tasked the British East India Company to keep track of the diamond's whereabouts. The British finally made their move when the only Indian heir left was a 10-year-old boy, Duleep Singh. They imprisoned Duleep's mother and forced him to sign away the country's sovereignty and the Koh Noor diamond. The diamond was then in the possession of Queen Victoria, and displayed in the Great Exposition of London in 1851. To add insult to injury, the British public was distinctly unimpressed, saying the diamond just looked like a piece of ordinary glass. This underwhelming reaction caused Prince Albert to have the stone recut and polished, reducing it to half its original size. Queen Victoria used it as a brooch before it was placed in the crown of Queen Alexandria's, then Queen Mary's, and finally in the crown of George VI's wife, Queen Elizabeth mother to Elizabeth II. The last time it was seen was atop the Queen Mother's coffin. Many call for the diamond to be returned to India, while others feel it is a more complex issue, as the gemstone was owned by the ruler of a nation that no longer exists. Number 3. The Sovereign's Orb 
Orbs have been used to signify earthly power since at least ancient Rome, when it was associated with Jupiter and indicated that the emperor was his representative on Earth. The orb was modified during the rise of Christianity by setting a cross at the top, denoting the Christian world. The sovereign's orb is one of the most well-known examples of a royal orb and was created in 1661 when the British monarchy was reinstated. As the orb represents the world, the band of jewels divides it into three sections, representing the three continents known in the Middle Ages. The orb is a hollow gold sphere decorated with emeralds, rubies, sapphires, rose-cut diamonds, and a row of pearls. The cross has a sapphire in the center of one side and an emerald on the other. It is also set with rose-cut diamonds and pearls. The orb has nine emeralds, nine sapphires, 18 rubies, 365 diamonds, 375 pearls, and weighs around two and a half pounds. During the coronation ceremony, the incoming monarch carries the orb in their right hand, placing it on the altar just before they are crowned. Number 2. The Sovereign Scepters The orb and scepter are highly recognizable iconography in the coronation of a new English monarch, and there are two scepters used during the crowning of a new monarch, the scepter with the cross and the scepter with the dove. The scepter with the cross was commissioned for Charles II's coronation and is adorned with a faceted amethyst mount. 333 diamonds, 31 rubies, 15 emeralds, 7 sapphires, and 6 spinels. It represents the crown's governance and power, despite the fact that the modern British royals are constitutional and hold very little sway over the governing of England. It has had some alterations over the years, the most controversial being the addition of the Cullinan the First diamond in 1910. The diamond setting is hinged to allow the gem to be removed and worn separately. The Cullinan diamond was found in 1905 and is the largest gem-quality rough diamond ever found, weighing around 1.5 pounds. The stone was found by Frederick G. S. Wells in Transvaal, which was a British colony at the time, and was unique for its size, purity, and blue-white color. It was on display at the Standard Bank of Johannesburg until 1907, when it was posted to London in order to find a buyer. Perhaps the most curious part of the story is that the stone was sent via registered mail while a decoy traveled in an armored ship. When no buyer was found, General Louis Botha, the first prime minister of the Union of South Africa, pushed the Transvaal government to buy the stone from the mining company for just over $19,000. Botha had fought against the British in the Boer War, but eventually wanted South Africa to be a British dominion, and it was decided that the Cullinan diamond would be presented to King Edward VII of England on his 66th birthday in order to try and restore relations between Britain and South Africa. In 1908, Edward decided that the rough diamond would be cut and made into nine large gemstones. The largest, Cullinan I, was dubbed the Great Star of Africa. It has an estimated value of $400 million and was set into the Sovereign Scepter in 1911 for the coronation of George V. The rest of the diamonds remain in the crown jewels as brooches, rings, pendants, and on the front of the imperial state crown. The second scepter is topped with a dove, symbolizing the Holy Ghost, and was traditionally known as the Rod of Equity and Mercy. The religious iconography found throughout the ceremonial crown jewels represents the monarch's divine right to rule. Although the scepter was made in 1661, it did have an older counterpart, and the origin of the Rod of Equity and Mercy dates back to the 1066 coronation of William the Conqueror. Number 1. St. Edward's Crown St. Edward's crown is one of the most recognizable pieces in the crown jewels and is worn by all incoming monarchs at the coronation ceremony. The crown worn by today's monarchs is a replica of the original and was made for Charles II in 1661. Crowns hold special significance for royalty, and ornamental headdresses have been worn to denote honor and prowess since the beginning of recorded history. The British coronation crown is named after the last Anglo-Saxon king, Edward the Confessor, who died in 1066, sparking the Norman invasion. Edward was canonized in 1161 by Pope Alexander III, as he was often considered a highly pious man and even referred to as a crowned monk. Before Edward, kings and chiefs of England wore distinctive ceremonial helmets during their coronations. However, this was altered when the unwarlike Edward was anointed, and an ornamental frame surrounded the helmet, as demonstrated on Edward's great seal. Over the years, the kings and queens of England have possessed and worn many different crowns, 
but St. Edward's crown gained importance after Henry III's coronation in 1216. This crown was then used at the coronation of every monarch from 1274 to 1626. However, it was modified in the 14th century to include an internal fur-lined cap and again in the 15th century with the addition of two intersecting arches and a miniature orb and cross. Oliver Cromwell deemed the original crown to be worthless church stuff, but still considered its symbolic value large enough to be destroyed in 1649. However, the monarchy was reinstated with Charles II just 11 years later, and a replacement crown was made. The current St. Edward's crown is not an exact replica of the original, but it does feature the original's four crosses pati, four fleur-de-lis, and two arches. The new crown is made of solid gold and set with tourmalines, topazes, garnets, sapphires, amethysts, and rubies. The cap within the crown is purple velvet, and the band is made of ermine, a fancy term for a ferret-like animal. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about British history, check out our book, History of England, A Captivating Guide to British History, Starting from Antiquity Through the Rule of the Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, Normans, and Tudors to the End of World War II. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.